Welcome back. Uh, today we will be looking into uh, multi-sim, uh, circuit simulation software. Uh, basically, we'll be using multi-sim to design our circuits at first, and uh, we'll check uh, the circuit requirements and specifications and uh, measure the voltage and current through our uh, components in the circuit. And once everything looks okay, we will be able to simulate it on multi-sim and if everything runs well you can use that design and implement it on a breadboard or a real life situation uh, in lab so um, let's open up multisim and once you open multisim for the first time it will show up with this uh, grid space uh, and uh, if it doesn't you can go to the file tab over here on the toolbar and press new and just click on the blank style twice and it will show up like this as you can see design 2 and I had it on design 1 at first so I'll be just using one of the design let's close design 2 over here okay so uh, first things first uh, on this grid space uh, if you want to design your electrical circuit uh, you will have all, if all of your electrical components uh, here on this toolbar or you can access them as well from this top toolbar and the place tab once you click on it you can see component and when you click on it you will see this window appear in front of you and it has all the electrical components that uh, multi-sim has access to uh, we can also do the same thing by clicking on one of this tabs it will bring you back to the same window of components now uh, what multisim does is it, it gives us access to this master database and under this master database all the uh, components are uh, divided under different groups mostly we will need uh, the sources group and the basic group for now and um, so like for instance if I click on the sources group it will list down all the different kinds of power supplies and uh, as you can see if you click on power sources here you will see DC power AC power and ground uh, let's say we want to design a circuit here today that has a power supply a DC power supply and two resistors and a ground so I will select DC power from here and that's how it looks like and if I press OK it will appear on your screen and once you click on the grid it should set it down over there and what multisim does is it reopens this window uh, because it doesn't really know how many times you will need a component so for us I will need a ground so as long as we are on the same group I will click on ground and have it as well on my screen and then I will need two resistors uh, for that I'll go back to the group and select basic and under basic we have resistor capacitor switches inductors and I will choose resistor here and it will show all the different kinds of resistor in there let's do that again and if you have something typed up in here it doesn't show all the different uh, available components so right now it, it's showing different ranges of resistors in here so you can either select uh, from you can either select from this ranges of resistors or you can just type in uh, the value you are looking for for instance I'm looking for 2 kilo ohms so I'll just type in 2k and it shows up here and I press ok so now it's on the screen again and uh, I will need another one so I'll press ok again and have it here and then let's just close this window uh, to make it look like the electrical circuits we usually draw on paper I will have this component R2 selected and then right click on it to rotate it 90 degree clockwise. To join this component, uh, hover on the component and once this cursor appears, just click on it once and you will see the connection coming out and then click on again the other component to finish the connection. I will continue to do so to have the whole circuit connected. there you go so uh, to change uh, the value of power supply or the resistors you don't necessarily have to go back to the component uh, feature again and again you can select that component 
and double click on it and it will show you the label and the value that we are using and if you want to change it like for instance I want to use something like 9 volt that uh, you know you, you usually get as a battery and I have 9 over there and then I want to change the label as well because I know in some of our lab exercises we have the voltage supply named as VS instead of V1 so I will have VS here and then you press OK and it changes same applies for resistor if you want to change it select the component at first double click on it and you can change the label and the value over there and you don't have to go back to the components tab again and again to do that so we have our circuit here to see if it's working uh, if you if you want to simulate it you have to click on this run button over here and while we get an error here the error says the circuit is not grounded and that is something i was expecting uh, so this is important every time you design a circuit on multi-sim it needs to be grounded in real life situations it can vary like for instance if you're using a 9 volt battery supply your uh, connections should start from the positive terminal of the battery and eventually end up in the negative terminal to complete the circuit when you are doing it on a breadboard uh, definitely the breadboard has the positive power supply from the battery or the power supply that we are using in lab and then you need to ground it using a ground terminal or the negative terminal of the power supply for multi-seam we'll just have this ground as I have selected before uh, on our grid and then I'll just connect this ground and you are on the circuit to make sure the circuit is grounded if I run it again now you will see uh, the power supply is generating uh, power and the current is flowing through the entire circuit and you can see the simulation running right now to stop it just press on the stop button what we really want to see is uh, if this circuit matches our requirements our expectations um, uh, let's just say I want to measure current flowing through R1 our voltage across resistor R1 right and to do that I need a multimeter to see if the right amount of voltage is going through this uh, you will get to use uh, lab equipments on multi-sim from this side toolbar or sidebar over here you, you can see the multimeter here function generator power meter oscilloscopes and we have uh, more realistic setting of oscilloscope like for instance you have the tektronics oscilloscope that you can usually use in a lab setting also agilent uh, oscilloscope and multimeter uh, for simplicity i'll just use the basic multimeter that we have here and to have it on our workspace we have to just click on the multimeter it appears on the screen just like before and have it set across r1 and have the positive terminal on one side of r1 and the negative on the other side that doesn't look good yeah so um, to see the reading on this multimeter if you click twice on the multimeter and window will appear and on that window you will see the reading and what this multimeter uh, allows you to do is it, it um, measures current voltage and the value of the resistor as well for now we will be looking into the voltage so I have I have the voltage tab selected here and now if you press on the run button and simulate it you're seeing 4.5 volt across R1 uh, does that make any sense uh, is this what we were expecting well we have a power supply of 9 volt coming into the circuit which has two resistors connected in series to each other right and uh, ideally this should this power supply voltage should get equally divided to resistor R1 and R2 because they are of same uh, resistance uh, over here in the circuit in this case uh, so by that definition we should be expecting R2 have a voltage drop of 4.5 volt as well so let's connect another a multimeter to R2 and get its voltage reading if you have more than one multimeter on your workspace uh, you can distinguish them by seeing the labels over here this one is XMM2 and this one is XMM1 and when I connect this multimeter into the circuit across R2 and double click on it the window for this one appears as well and this one is labeled as XMM2 as well and the voltage tab is also selected so now if I run that I am seeing 4.5 volt for both of them so basically that's uh, multi-sim uh, circuit simulation briefly 
uh, you have all the electrical components listed here under different groups for now we will be mostly using the place source and the basic group uh, you can also access this from this top toolbar and the component section or you can also use this toolbar over here right for uh, the lab equipments the multimeter and the oscilloscopes you can access them from this sidebar over here and have them on your circuit now to save this uh, um, uh, save this design uh, what I'll do is I'll go back to file and just save as uh, what it will do is it's it's going to save that multi-sim MS14 file on the network uh, uh, because you are using Citrix receiver to do this. So uh, how it helps is you can access this uh, design from anywhere once you log into your Citrix account on any PC or any uh, uh, personal device. That that helps. That really helps a lot. Um, I had it before, so I'll just replace this with this. And uh, what I'll do right now is I'll also save it actually printed as a PDF I want to generate a PDF file of this design so that I can carry it around with me so I will use the print option to do that and when you do that you will see this list of options for printing and you choose Adobe PDF and just press OK and this will save uh, on your um, desktops any directory or on the network wherever you want it you can select it from here and once you save it, I had it before, so I'll just replace it. And it's going to generate the PDF file over here. So we have our exact design with the multimeters connected. Unfortunately, it's not going to show you the readings on the multimeter, but it will definitely give you the design and uh, the state of your circuit, which you can you know, use to generate a lab report or have it around with you to discuss uh, if it's correct or not. Well, that is it more or less for Multisim. I will show how to use the oscilloscope and uh, how to use the AC power supply instead of this DC power supply, uh, hopefully in the next video. Till then, uh, take care and goodbye. Thank you.